Hello everyone, this is your Mars Hill um, lecture for Grammar 3 on 11.30. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Um, here we're starting Unit 3 for Lesson 14. Um, and I'll get into uh, talking about Lesson 14, but first I uh, emailed you last night um, explaining how I'd like you to turn in your uh, unit 2 test, um, but I'll reiterate it. I want you to turn it in under the tab on Google Classroom for uh, for unit 2 exam. If you have any trouble, let me know, but I really do want you to turn it in tomorrow. Make sure you get it up there tomorrow. And I have plenty of time to help you if you're having trouble with that. Okay, so in unit 3, we're talking about pronouns. Um, this is review, obviously, from last year, but I thought I'd go through the Unit 3 introduction anyway because it can be helpful. So this first point is probably the most important thing to remember. There will definitely be questions on your quizzes about it. That's a really bad job of circling. So the pronoun uh, takes the place of a noun. So if you asked what a pronoun is, it's a word that takes the place of a noun. The word the pronoun replaces is called an antecedent. An antecedent. If you um, are paying attention here to the word antecedent, you'll see that it comes from, uh, let's see, let's see if this will work. So the word antecedent comes from ante plus kedo. Now, ante, you know, means before, and kedo means to fall. Uh, there's also kado. So it falls before, uh, or it's the word that it replaces, the pronoun replaces. Now, there are eight kinds of pronouns. You have to learn the names of them, uh, but we have not covered many of them yet. So we haven't covered the relative or the demonstrative or the indefinite pronouns. And we'll get to those next year basically in grammar four but do memorize these names the personal and possessive the reflexive and intensive the relative and interrogative and the demonstrative and indefinite you've learned the first and second person personal and possessive pronouns in this unit you will learn the third person pronouns and the reflexive intensive and demonstrative pronouns so a lot of these uh, the remaining pronouns, the relative, interrogative, and definite, will be covered in fourth form, like I said. Uh, pronouns can be confusing for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that they have an attribute of verbs, that is, person. Uh, as you know, you've gotten used to nouns having, not having person, and verbs having person. So this is the first, second, or third person. But pronouns have that because it either refers to an I or a you or a he, she, or it. But they also have attributes of nouns that verbs don't have. For example, gender and case. Gender and case. Also, a pronoun must agree with its antecedent. Pronoun must agree with its antecedent. And uh, the pronoun agreement rule is really important here. A pronoun agrees with its antecedent and gender and number, but its case is determined by its function in its own clause. So gender and number, but not necessarily case. The third reason why pronouns can be confusing is that some of them function as adjectives and pronouns, um, but I don't think that that I personally don't think that that will be very confusing when we get to it, but we will see. Okay, when a pronoun functions as an adjective, it obeys the adjective agreement rule. So if it acts like an adjective, it follows the rules of adjectives. The demonstrative pronouns point to something. In English, the demonstrative pronouns are this, these, that, and those. Um, there are four demonstrative pronouns in Latin. They are is ea id, he kai kok, ille illa illud, and iste ista istud. And these have very slightly different meanings. Um, 
you'll notice that is a id uh, is also the regular third person pronoun, which we'll learn um, and in the next couple of weeks. So it has two different kinds of options or meanings. It can either be the personal pronoun or the demonstrative in a nonspecific sense. But we'll get back to the distinctions here among the demonstrative pronouns uh, later. Okay, the reflexive and intensive pronouns have the same forms in English, but different forms in Latin. So in English, they have the suffix self or selves. So, for example, themselves, himself, itself. Um, that's how we make it uh, intensive or reflexive in English. In Latin, obviously we, have, obviously, we have a different way to do that. A reflexive pronoun reflects back on the subject of its own clause. This is another good grammar question you could definitely be asked on quizzes or homework. A reflexive pronoun reflects back on the subject of its own clause. An intensive pronoun, on the other hand, gives emphasis to the noun or pro to another noun or pronoun in the sentence. All right, let's see here. Let's move on now. So that's our introduction to the uh, Unit 3 about adver about pronouns. Let's see if we can get this. There we go. All right, so lesson 14. This is a review of the first and second personal pronoun and the possessive pronoun adjectives. So uh, you'll remember this. Ego me yi mihi me me nos nostri nostrum nobis nos nobis. That's I, of, me, to, or for me, me, I, in, by, with, or from me. And then in the plural, we, of, us, to, or for us, us, and in, by, with, and from us. So the things to know here, things to remember. Um, the genitives in the plural and the singular do not have possessive meaning. So they're not possessive at all. They're instead either objective or partitive or some other kind of uh, use of the genitive case. And we've talked about some of these uses of the genitive case before, but the objective genitive, I'm going to move over here, the objective genitive uh, is a descriptive. So, let me write that, descriptive. Okay, so it's descriptive. For example, uh, caput mundi is a good example. Uh, the head of the world. It's not that the head belongs to the world, it's that uh, it's the head, specifically the one of the world. It's describing more about it. On the other hand, the partitive genitive has a nice uh, name. It describes part of something. So often you see the word part with it, parse with it. So parse, uh, I don't know, parse gentium, part of the tribes, uh, pars, uh, domus, domum, part of the uh, house, something like that. Okay, um, another thing to remember or to notice is that as we've sort of gotten accustomed to, uh, the dative and ablative plurals match, nobis, nobis. Um, let's see, what else? that's about it. But just remember that the genitives are not used to show possession. They're instead used for these other sorts of genitive constructions. Okay, now about second person pronoun. This is kind of similar in a lot of ways. Tu, tui, tibi, te, te, vos, vestri, slash, vestrum, vobis, vos, vobis. So again, we see the same uh, genitives we have two options for the plural genitive. Neither of these is going to be uh, used for possession. They're going to be used for objective or partitive or something like that. Okay, so remember the objective genitive describes and the partitive genitive uh, indicates what part of something. Um, okay, another thing to see is that uh, like, uh, like ego... Uh, two also has the same dative and ablative plurals. Um, 
Also, you can kind of see a pattern here, may, may, in the accusative and ablative singular of this first person, and te, te, in the corresponding cases in its own declension. So these are some patterns you can pay attention to. Okay, nope, I'm messing it up. There we go. Okay, then the first and second person possessive pronoun adjectives. These are, this has an intense name here. Uh, the first person possessive pronoun adjective is meus mea meum, so my. Uh, the second person is tuus, tua tuum. And then in the plural, we have noster, nostra nostrum, and vester, vestra vestrum. Uh, <clears throat> Some of the things to pay attention to, oh, and remember, these these adjectives decline like first and second declension uh, adjectives. So let me write that down. They decline like first, second, adjectives. Okay, because verb endings indicate the person and number of the subject, personal pronouns in the nominative case ordinarily only express or only used to express clarity, contrast, or emphasis. So uh, we've seen this before. You don't need to use ego. Um, well, you rarely ever have to use it. Um, so, for example, I wouldn't normally just say, uh, let me see, where can I write this? I wouldn't normally say, ego amo te, that, which would mean, I love you. Normally, I would just say, amo te, right? Amo te, I love you, because the O there tells me already that it's I. But the ego can be used to express uh, emphasis or something like that. So, for example, I can write ego amote, and what I'm saying is, I love you. So I'm either uh, making an emphatic statement, I love you, or I'm contrasting I to somebody else. So maybe I would say, you don't love her, but I love you. And I could use ego in that case to emphasize or to draw a contrast between me and something else or someone else. Okay, uh, here's another review grammar fact. Cum is an enclitic with the ablative case of the personal pronouns. So, you remember, an enclitic is a word that attaches itself to the end of another word. Cum is often an enclitic as this note is telling us, with the personal pronouns, especially the first and second personal pronouns. So, me cum means with me, te cum with you, nobis cum with us, and vobis cum with y'all. All right? Also, the possessive pronoun adjectives meus to us noster and vester observe the adjective agreement rule. They usually follow the noun. So, remember what the adjective agreement rule is the adjective agreement rule is that nouns and adjectives have their adjectives have to match in gender number and case okay gender number and case whereas pronouns have to match in gender and number but not necessarily case because that's determined by its own clause all right in Latin, the personal pronoun adjective is not normally used when referring to parts of one's own body or members of one's immediate family. For example, if I wanted to say, I love my mother, usually it's sufficient to just say, matrem amo, I love my mother, and we would translate that with a possessive there. Same with hands, you wouldn't say, I wa lava manus meus or something. We wouldn't say, I, wa I, don't, I wash my hands or you wash your hands, we would just say, lava manus, wash your hands. All right, that's page one there. On the other side, we have, um, we have some new vocabulary. Please make sure to memorize your genders. 
And if your quiz asks you to give the dictionary form, dictionary form, For a noun is the nominative singular, the genitive singular, then the, the uh, gender. You have to give all three of those if it's asked for, if that's what it's asking for. Okay. Um, another uh, note here, unless they have natural gender, most third declension noun endings and nouns ending in O in the nominative case are feminine as shown above, with ordo being an exception since it's masculine. Okay, and here I already kind of covered this, <coughs> but the objective and genitive, or partitive genitives are explained in your lesson too, and I'll let you review that as needed. Okay, um, I, with that, will leave you to your studies. Please let me know if you have any questions or if you have trouble uploading your uh, your homework. God bless you.